Hello YouTube viewers. Hello new eBay users. This video is geared towards the new eBay user to help them understand how to navigate through eBay and save them money. It can take a good education to learn all this technical information that is necessary to function in eBay and keep your money in your pocket. You can actually go on eBay and spend your money as you do in the store and not save yourself any money but that's not the point of why we go on eBay we shop eBay to save money and a good amount of it too so if you're an advanced user you may not find this video very helpful but if you're having troubles keeping your money in your pocket this could be a good video for you and it starts with your keyword usage in your search terms up here this is our search box right up in this area right here and I'm going to use the test product iPod it's a very popular product and it brings back a lot of results and it gives us a lot of talk to talk about. So, searching for that iPod, you can see here again, top left, it's almost a quarter of a million results. See, right there. Quarter million results found for iPod. What you can do to limit having to look through such a large selection and is you're going to refine your search. And you can add terms to it, keyword search terms like iPod Touch, if this happens to be a product that you're interested in. And now you'll notice that the search results went down to 119,000 results. And you can continue to refine your search and become more accurate. You can also refine your search too much and you're not going to be able to tell the true value of an item, say if you're trying to sell it or you may not be able to find a product for a good deal to buy it if say there's only one or two of them but both those sellers are selling it for a very high price doesn't mean that product doesn't exist on eBay just means you over searched yourself out of finding a good deal so there's going to be a balance between the two to do that what you have to understand is how keywords are recognized by the computer keywords are recognized by the computer by what you put in here the computer takes that word touch and looks for it exactly as it's written in the title here so in every one of these titles you're going to see touch see you see touch in this title you see touch in this title and if we get down below the eBay solicitations to where the average users are you'll see touch in every one of their titles also here you see touch you see touch you see touch and that's how the keywords work now if the keyword is misspelled by you or the person who made the listing you're not going to hook up again that's how keywords work okay so we're going to look at another product in this instance also called the nano because I've done a lot of research on the nano I should be able to show you this easily and what we're going to do is Look below here in the drop down that eBay is providing for you and you can see it says second generation and sixth generation. These are keyword terms that are used by most of the sellers even though they're not what Apple uses in their product description of the product. Apple tends to say 2G instead of second generation whenever they have an advertisement for that product. So some people relate to that advertisement they see from Apple instead of writing down second generation they'll actually write 2G and that's going to bring up a whole different search result than looking at second generation so let's test it out currently we're looking for 2G in the titles and we're going to come down here to where the average seller is and well we're not seeing that quite exactly ah well there's a 2G right there and there's a 2G, but it's a 2GB. What the computer is doing, it's recognizing the 2 and the G as two different components of the search here. So having numbers in your search, like with the 2G, isn't really much of a benefit to help you get to your end results. However, the 2 is going to bring you back to the same page. with everything that has a 2 in its search results. See, there's a 2, but it's also got an ND. There's a 2, and there's a 2 that's got a GB, and there's a 2 that's got an ND. And there's a 2 that has an X behind it. 
So using your numbers in that manner to look for a specific product like a 2G can throw your search results off. Also notice here we were looking at 5,500 results for this current page of just iPod Nano 2. Now we're going to look at iPod Nano 2G and it's going to trim us down to 2,150 results. And let's go look at these titles. There's a 2. But it's also got the ND. Well, I see a G right there, too. There's another G. And there's a 2, but it's got an ND. And there's a 2. But when you play that same idea with your words, we went from iPod Touch and we searched. Everything will come up with touch in the title. I guarantee it. You see touch, touch, and you even see that this one is an eye touch, but it has touch after the eye, and the computer recognizes that. Touch. Every one of the titles. Touch, 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 touch. And you can do the same for now. And every one of these search results is going to show nano in the title. Nano. Nano. And we're down here again to the typical search results. Nano. 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 Alright, so realize when you're going and searching for products, the numbers can throw your search off, but the words will be very specific. Also, we end up with so many different products. We got uh, this guy is trying to say he's got this iPod Nano Blue MP3 music video picture. Well, if you put any one of those words in your search term, he's going to show up. But how do we get rid of things that we do not want to look at? Well, we enter in the search box up here with the negative, and then put the word, the term that you're looking in, like. We don't want to look at anything that says four in it. Or we don't want to look at anything that says three in it. Now that will work. If we do our search like this, see there's no three, there's no four, there's no two in here neither. This one has got a 41. But you'll see there's no three and there is no four anywhere. This one says six. This is a 6G. There's a 2, but there's not going to be a 3 or the 4 anywhere in any of these titles. Now using your numbers like that, you can target just as well as you can words. The words will do that too. So if we have this in here and it says gin, and we don't want to look at anybody saying gin, we could also come up here and go minus gin. And look again. Now, none of these titles are going to say 3, 4, or gin in them anywhere. I guarantee it. You can look all day long. There's not going to be a 3, 4, or a gin. And let me see if I can read through any of this with you. There's no 3, 4, or a gin. Now, when you do this using the negative sign up here, Make sure that you have no space between the negative sign and your search term. Otherwise, it's not going to recognize those as being one component of your search. And everything with the gin in it will now show up. As a matter of fact, it's going to pull up everything with the gin as a preferable search term because now it's thinking that I'm highlighting gin. I'm, it's thinking that I'm actually looking for gin specifically instead of everything but gin particularly. So you can see everywhere we look now, there's a gin in every one of the titles. Gin. Okay, I look bad on that one. Gin. 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 Oh, there it is right there. Gin. Every one of these titles. Gin. Gin. 
Alright, Jen, see how that works? So when you want to make sure you don't have search terms in your search, you might want to make sure that you got that negative sign right against your search term. And that's how you use keywords to search for a product. Knowing how to search for a product, you're going to be able to save yourself money. In the next video, we're going to work on determining how much you should spend on a particular product. And to know how to do that, you really have to know how to use your keywords and understand how the computer sees the keywords and relates that to what it sees in the listing. And that's by taking the keywords literally out of how you type them here. If you mistype it, that's the way it's going to look at it. It's going to try to compare it to what it finds in the listing. And eBay currently only has it targeted towards what's in the title of the listing. So it's not too difficult as long as you can understand this concept. Alright, absorb that and then come back to my next video. And what I'm going to show you is more on how to refine your search and how to make that work to save money in your pocket. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.